attract travelers to your referral roadmap. This podcast is dedicated to helping you unleash your personal and business revenue potential by cultivating referral relationships. In this 10 part series, we're diving into the dynamic realm of target markets. We'll be exploring how understanding and effectively tapping into target markets can be a key driver of success, offering insights and strategies to master this essential aspect of business. Today, we're talking about staying relevant and how to adapt to an evolving customer preference. So defining customer behavior and customer preference, you might already know what it means, but it also might be helpful. So (laughs) in a couple of words, consumer behavior is the group of actions and decisions of people who buy products and services for their personal consumption. Athena, do you have a story on this to share with us? Oh, I do. And I'm so excited to share this because... You guys know uh, I'm a little bit on the nerdy side and I enjoy um, absolutely going in and reading lots of books. And I think you guys all know Darren Hardy's my mentor. So Jada, recently I got to go to San Diego and um, do a mastermind with 50 other global leaders with Darren Hardy himself in a room for two days. And we got to share what's going on in the current market what is working. And I I wanted to share one of those stories with you guys, because in this room, first of all, can I just say, I was so humbled to be there and I'm not trying to diminish myself. I was really like the low person on the totem pole in that room. (laughs) And that is a success. If you're listening to this, you're on a treadmill or your walk, I will tell you, always try to get into a room where everyone is more accomplished, successful than you, because that's the room that people educate you, right? I mean, that's where we want to be. So if you find yourself always the smartest one in the room, you got to check that for a second because you, you want to continue to push yourself. So that being said, one of the things that was the theme um, that Darren really wanted to make sure us global leaders heard is this customer preferences are changing because of technology and attitudinal changes post COVID experience so rapidly that he warned all 50 of us that he has always done a 10 year plan, five year plan, Jada, a three year plan. And he is saying currently right now, you must have a vision of what you want your enterprise, your business to look like in 10 years but have a vision for it. You know, I love it when he always likes to refer to the Bible with lack of vision, people perish. So he always is like, you need to have the vision. But he said, honestly, right now, a three-year and five-year plan, everything is changing. The customer preferences are changing. The way people go about business, technology is changing so rapidly. I'm going to quote him. He said this, You will be doing business in two to three and five years in a manner you don't even understand available to you right now. Hmm. So I want you to digest that. He said, you will be utilizing tools and needing to change your strategy that your two to three, five year plan, you don't have the information to even plan it. Now digest that for a second. I mean, that's crazy. So one of the things that about this podcast that I really want you guys to hear is we have got as business leaders and sales leaders and professionals, we have got to put our thumb, fingers, a whole hand, if you will, right, on the pulse of technology and the human buying experience. So Jada, I'm talking to you and I as I'm talking to everyone. I just want to tell you, so Jada and I are responsible for two businesses and all the sales and marketing for those two businesses. And we're doing that in an ever-changing environment. So, you know, I will say Jada and I are consistently reading books. We're studying, we're reaching out to people because we get, there's so much change and to learn. So today I want you to understand that really the story is we have to adapt. We have to be agile. We have to pivot. And right now we need to understand the consumer buying behaviors better than ever and never get complacent and comfortable that, Hey, I got this. They've been doing this for X amount of time. That is suicide in business right now. We can't do that. So 
I want you to be successful. If you're part of this tribe, I really, I, I want to make sure that I disseminate from my mentors, the information to you. Jada and I will continue to do these podcasts and do blogs and um, webinars about these things to help you because we're on the front lines with you and we are learning and adapting. So the story here is let's, I'm going to call this, that my husband will appreciate this. Let's go in marine mode. And marine <laughs> mode means we have to adapt and overcome and constantly be willing to pivot, right? Mm -hmm. So if we want to excel, we need to figure out how we stay on top of it. So today we're going to go through, I know Jada, you're going to go some, through some facts and figures. And one of the facts, Jada, will you share the little, where one of the facts comes from on a personal level? Because I think that would be oh. fun. <laughs> Yeah, so one of them comes from Gartner, uh, which is a research and advisory company, and my husband works for them. So I thought it was really funny that <laughs> something that some research that they did is very applicable to what we're talking about today. We're just keeping it in the family. We can yeah, just keeping it. He's <laughs> gathering the information for us so that we can disseminate it to everybody else. So, yeah. Jada, I've told everybody what my mentor is saying. We know you're going to give the facts and figures, so get with it. Yeah, so I have three different sources today. Um, one is Global Trade Magazine, one is Gartner, shout out, <laughs> um, and then one is HubSpot. And so I'm just going to read some excerpts from, uh, very small excerpts from their research, and then I will make sure that the links are in the show notes if you want to dive deeper into those. So in Global Trade Magazine, they touched on leveraging a CRM, so a customer relationship management tool. They say that manually tracking customer feedback is a fool's errand. There are simply too many simultaneous conversations occurring across a multitude of venues. Instead, companies should use customer relationship management tools, so CRM, to track their interactions with current and potential consumers to aggregate the consumer insights into a centralized location. Can and I, I just want to... Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to stop there and say, Athena, isn't that what you've been saying for years? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, you guys, I had to just stop. You know, I have to interject. I have been coaching this <laughs> for as long as I have been coaching. I have been screaming, you must have a CRM. Um, and I, I know if you're, if you're in sales right now, you're like, but I, I want to be, you know, closing the deals and doing that. I don't want to be sitting and doing the data, but the data helps you sell. So you got to do it. And if you are managing salespeople, you're like, I can't get them to do it. Explain how the data helps them close deals. That's what we're talking about. If you own your own business and you don't have a CRM, it really, you guys, that's like opening, that's like opening today for business without a website. You would not go into business without a website and plan to be successful. So don't plan on opening a business without a CRM. It's critical, critical. So interesting that the CRM we use, HubSpot, is also the, one of the ones we're quoting today. We don't get paid <laughs> by HubSpot. They're not sponsoring this. We like them. We don't, Jade and I don't care what, which one you use. We just ask that you use one. Okay, I'll get yeah. off the soapbox. Go ahead. <laughs> No, you're great. Um, so according to the study by Gartner, one of the most exciting re or exciting things regarding customer behavior and customer support effort is that 80% of online customers want to connect with a customer support representative before they make the final decision about a potential purchase. So in other words, online customers want the ability to communicate with a staff member for help in the exact same type of way and service that they would typically receive in a brick and mortar store. So kind of stopping there. Yeah. When I, you know, I think chatbots have become a really popular thing on multiple websites. And so that may be something that our consumers are interested in, you know, because they're getting that immediate interaction with someone just as they would if they walked into say the Apple store and are talking to someone face to face right then. I get and then it. The, <laughs> the last bit of research I wanted to share was from HubSpot. So there's a couple different statistics I wanted to share. One is short form video content. So TikTok, Reels, YouTube shorts, et cetera. I'm sure in five months, they're going to come out with more options. <laughs> we'll continue to rule. According to a recent study, 56% of US consumers said that they bought something based on an ad they saw on TikTok. And 36% said that they were willing to buy something after seeing an ad on TikTok. 
that's just wild to me. <laughs> I know. I guess we're going to have to TikTok, Jada. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then another one is creating content reflecting the brand's value will be a key to re retaining your customers. According to Consumer Good Technology, 82% of shoppers want a, consum a consumer brand's value to align with their own. Furthermore, 75% of shoppers say they've cut ties with a brand Ooh. over conflict and values. Wow. Wow. That's a that's a really high percentage to yeah. Cut ties so with. I think Jada, right there. I mean, you guys, obviously, we are disseminating this information to you, but Jada and I are on the front lines. Jada, we need to look and make sure that our value proposition is is well placed on in both of our businesses as well. So that is great yeah. stat. Absolutely. And then last but not least, at least forty seven percent of buyers view three to five pieces of content before engaging with a sales rep and most expect brands to create content to gain their interest. That's why brands worldwide have only grown their investment in content marketing. Mm -hmm. So Athena, now that we have all of those statistics and facts, what content strategies are brands investing in? Well, and the one of the things I want to tell you is, you know, how do you do this, right? I mean, mm -hmm. rubber meets the road. You, I love the stats because we need to be watching those. Um, yeah more critically and obviously we'll bring those to you guys through this podcast and our blogs but what do you do now we take this information this is the part that i want you to like and subscribe this so you can go back and have a notebook and write these things down these are action items so first of all we need to be analyzing data regularly analyzing our customers data is um perfect we need to understand what's trending what's changing so again, what did we say? We have to go into marine mode, adapt, fit of it, pivot and overcome. We need to be aware. What the last thing I want you guys to do is to sit back and think we already know, right? We, we don't. So we need in that CRM to be tracking the buying behavior, the sales cycle, the attitude change. We need to, if you have repeat clients, we need to be having conversations with them. What can we do better? How can we engage? How can we get more people like you with your referral partners? These are, this is a critical part of your business going forward. Stay agile. Number two, be flexible and adapt quickly to customer changes. This is the time where we're just flexible. I want you just to see yourself, you know, just, okay, you know, I think of myself, you know, on a pickleball court, right? Or a tennis court and your, your feet are just moving constantly because you're just waiting. Where's the ball going to go? That's the attitude we have to have in business. We've got to be having those feet moving, waiting for where the ball is going to go. Um, very important to be aware of. Listen to feedback. Actively be seeking consumer changes in your market. Understand what's happening in your industry. Understand what's happening in the minds and hearts of your clients, be willing to go get the feedback, even if it's constructive, right? Even if they don't like something you're doing, wouldn't you rather know, right? Wouldn't you rather know? So um, the other number four, embrace technology. And I can't say this enough. We need to embrace technology. It is part of how we're going to grow and expand and develop business, but use tech for personalization experiences. So there's a key here. There's a yin and yang in tech. Use the tech, but make it personal. Use tech, but make it personal. Okay, so really important. The consumer, all the reports Jane and I keep reading and what has been disseminated down to me is yes, use the tech, but it's about relationships and personalization. So think through that. Offer personalization is number five, right? Tailor offerings to the individual. Talk human to human. Um, Darren even says one face by product, one face by product. Somebody needs to be the face because it's that interaction and people are starving for it more than ever. Number six, be customer centric, focus on solving the customer's problems. This we should, okay. If we're in sales, come on. And if you own a business, you're in sales. It's always been, now I'm not saying customers are always right. That's not true, but we do need to understand what the problems are we're, we're solving in order to make it about them. So that's really, that, that should have already been on our radar, but let's make sure. Number seven, stay current. Keep up with your industry and social trends. They're changing rapidly. What worked last six months may not work right now. Don't get overwhelmed. Just have it on your radar to be looking to see what is adapting, what's changing. And 
encourage engagement, right? Now, I will just tell you, the more I dig into how to create raving fans and how to get people attracted to you, it's about fostering community, about conversation. One of my pet peeves, and I, I know none of you listening do this, but when somebody I know um, has a business or in sales and they post something to social media and people comment it and they don't re-comment, you guys, that's an easy win. Remember, the reason you're posting is to have a conversation. And the way people's brains work is the conversation on social media is a conversation. Can you imagine if Jada and I went to coffee and she said something to me and I just stared off? <laughs> I mean, for real though, that's what's happening on social media. You would never do that. So don't do it on social media. If they've taken the time to comment, you take the time to comment back. That could be your next deal. That could be the next connection, next referral partner, next strategic partner. I can't say it enough. It's about engagement. Make sure that we're doing that. Number nine, provide omni-channel experiences. What does that mean? It just means know where your people are and make sure that they can connect with you because people know there, there's a lot of options for them out there, right? Of where they want to hang out on social media and in person, go find out and go to multiple different areas. You know, Jada and I, we're not on TikTok. Based on these statistics, that's something we'll probably have to talk about. I'm resistant to it. Frankly, y'all, just be honest, because I don't want to have to scroll. I don't want to get lost in the worm of TikTok. But, <laughs> you know, we have to stay agile, maybe, because you need to be on the different platforms. But just know, know where your target market is and then make sure that you're there. And then number 10, innovate. Always seek new ways to meet customers' needs. So be sitting down. Make sure that your team and you are collaborating. What are the problems right now? What are they worried about? What's keeping them up at night? And how can we help them? You guys, mm -hmm. that's a great comprehensive. Again, like, follow. Let's, let's make sure you guys write this stuff down because it could be the difference between you thriving and you hurting in the next six, eight months to a year. So, all right, Jada, what's up next though? Yeah, so what is up next? Great question. We would love to invite all of you travelers to join us on the Success Revolution. It is our weekly blog fueled by relationships, referral, and revenue, where you get those weekly growth strategies to take control of your sales and achieve your full potential straight to your inbox. So the link will be in the show notes below so you can subscribe to that as well as wanted to invite you all to like and subscribe to our podcast and join us next week for the last episode of the season. I can't believe we're almost there as Athena brings some real talk and real strategies on pivoting your target market, the worthwhile fear with our special guest, Emily Strickler. We can't wait to see you there. <laughs>